I want to cover something that has been, I would say, perhaps one of the primary reasons of divorces in many families, and it is the subject of money and marriage. And I'm going to go through, inshallah, some things today, and then next week, inshallah, we'll go through some other things. And if you have any questions, inshallah, you can always DM me, inshallah. First of all is that the very first topic I want to cover today is that what is the husband's financial responsibility towards his family as highlighted in the Quran and the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa First of all is that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he says in a hadith, every one of you is a shepherd. Kullukum ra'in wa kullukum mas'oolun an ra'iyatihi. This is a hadith that many of us we have heard. Every one of you is a shepherd and he is responsible for his flock. The leader of the people is a guardian and responsible for his subjects and his people. A man is responsible for his family and he is, he is a guardian over his family and he's responsible for them. And a woman is the guardian of her husband's home and his children and she is responsible for them. So the Prophet wasallam clearly mentions that what is the role of the man? He is a guardian and he is also responsible for his children. The woman, she is also a guardian and she is also responsible to maintain uh, the husband's home and the children. Now, keeping this in mind, when we talk about spending for a man, for his family, how much does he have to spend? When we study the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it very clear. In the second juz, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about having children, he mentions that, that first of all, he says that how long does that breastfeeding process take place? And in that ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَعَلَى الْمَوْلُودِ لَهُ رِزْقُهُنَّ وَكِسْوَتُهُنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ This is a word that we'll find many times in the Qur'an, which is ma'roof, which is what is general, what is in the urf, what is in the standard of society. Islam does not give us technicalities. Islam gives us principles. Just like when you see a math teacher, a math teacher does not teach technicalities. The math teacher teaches formulas. When you're studying geometry, algebra, and so forth, they give you the formula. Whenever you see a problem, you apply that formula and you'll get your answer. Likewise, Islam gives us formulas. Quran simply said, bil ma'ruf." Whatever is the standard of your society, because every single person is going to live in a different society. Is that society may be affluent, it may not be affluent, it may be high high class, middle class, lower class in terms of finances. Then you have to look at your situation. Not only that, but in Surah Talaq also, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Liyun fiqdu saati min saati." Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that every person should spend on their family based on what is the need of the family and based on their own financial status. So once again, the Quran is telling us that when it comes for when it comes to a man spending upon his family. They should first spend on the needs of the family. And what that basically means is when it comes to the children, the children's basic needs. Okay? Taking care of them, looking after them. If they have a wife that is staying at home, then providing enough money that they can take care of the child and the basic needs of the child, the clothing, they taking care and so forth. When it comes to the wife, the husband is responsible for her clothing, for her lodging, for her food, for her hygienic, hygienic needs and so forth, and also for her health. Health for the kids, health for her, uh, for her. This is the husband's responsibility because in this day and age, these are things that are considered as necessity. Now, one second, every single family is different. In some cases, a car may be necessity. In some cases, a car may not be necessity, but that is where we look at our family needs and we make that assessment. And also upon the man, when his parents do become old and they don't have a means of a job or they don't have any means of earning money, then in that case, then the brothers of the family are primarily responsible to take care of their, fa uh, to take care of their, of their parents. So understanding this, we now understand that what is the husband responsible for and what does he have to take care of. And it's also very important to also understand that when you study the books of fiqh, that is why in every single major book of fiqh, you will find a chapter known as Babul Kufu. What is Kufu? Kufu in simple terms is compatibility. 
So there are many areas of compatibility that a man has to look at before they get married. One of those areas is finances. Now, if a man, financially speaking, he's at the middle area, he's in, you know, considered as middle class financially speaking, but he's going to go and look for a woman who is financially more, at, you know, more, uh, uh, more in a higher class than he is, then he has to also understand that he's going to have to spend more money to take care of her. That is why from a kufu perspective, that may not be the best situation for him, may not be the best option for him. On the other hand, if a woman understands that I come from a very rich family, an extremely affluent fam family, and I'm getting married to someone who does not have a very high income, then I myself, the woman has to also understand that if I get married, then I will have to lower my standards. I will have to lower my standards and I may have to be satisfied in some areas that I've not been able to, you know, I've not been, I did not have to compromise in those areas in my life. But once again, that is why a man has that choice. A woman has that choice. A woman cannot be forced into a marriage of like this type where she is forced to uh, make compromises and so forth. If she says that, well, this person does not come from a very affluent financial background, I don't want to get married to him. That's her choice. But if the woman says, I want to get married to him, and she understands that financially that family or that man is not where her father is, then she will have to make sacrifices. And once again, that is why we have Babul Kufu in place so that we understand these kind of things prior to a woman or a man getting married. Now, the next thing is, is there a financial responsibility on the wife, especially if she's working? She has a job and there are many cases I've come across where she has a better job than the husband. She makes more money and so forth. So first of all is that the thing to understand is, the key thing is, that she is not responsible towards her family at all, okay? So it means that she is not required to pitch in into her family at all for the, for the house expenses and so forth. Meaning that whatever is res the responsibility of the husband, she is not required uh, to pitch in. However, there is, the, you know, many of the ulama have talked about this, that there is nothing wrong if she does pitch in. In fact, Many of the ulama have said, and they have stated it in this way, I'm going to try to put it in the best way possible. From the perfection of a woman is that she does give to her family when she sees that her family is in need. And it is from the perfection of man that he does not force his wife to spend uh, on, his, on, on the family. Meaning that the, the husband should not force her that she has to give to the family, and that's called the perfection of man. And the perfection of woman also is that they should spend on the family when they, when they, uh, when they see the family is in need. And by the way, subhanAllah, we see that what's happening in this day and age where there's a lot of selfishness that has come into the families, especially when it comes to money. And subhanAllah, for me, like I may be more of a traditional person here when I say this, but I have never ever believed in the idea that it's mine, mine, and mine. When you talk about a family, when you talk about a husband and wife, you're talking about working with each other. It's all about teamwork. It's all about working in cohesion and working in, you know, you're working in sync with each other. So when the family, when the woman sees that the family is in need, I've seen, I've heard cases before, and I've read about these kind of cases where women, they say, okay, fine, my family needs it, I'll give it. But then she will put that stipulation on her husband. Now, once again, some of the ulama say that it's her right. If she puts the stipulation, that's absolutely her right. But once again, when you talk about a family, it's a little different. For me, my understanding is that when it comes to the family, give. And inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you. Allah understands. But many times you find that they will put that stipulation, I'm going to give to the family, but the husband has to owe that money back to me because this is my money. You understand? So once again, traditionally speaking, it should never be like that. The woman should give if she sees that the family is in need. Imagine the husband has probably lost his job or probably they have been, you know, jobs have been slashed. His paycheck has been slashed and so forth. She sees that the family is in need and there's taking time to make adjustments from a financial budget perspective. She, if she has the money, step in and give the money inshallah. Now, the next question when it comes to women's finances is, is she required? 
or I mean, is she, yeah, is she required to ask permission from her husband before she spends her money? And there's an ikhtilaf in this matter. The, uh, the Hanabila and the Malikiyah, they say that a woman is required to take permission from her husband before she spends her money. And based on what? There was a, a woman by the name of Khaira. She was the wife of Ka'b bin Malik radiallahu ta'ala an. She came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and she said that I have some jewelry which I want to spend. And I want to uh, per perhaps either liquidate it and so forth. The hadith is not very clear about it. She, the hadith simply mentions she came to the Prophet sallallahu with some jewelry. She wanted to spend some money of her own. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked her that has Ka'b, your husband, has he given you permission? She said yes. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa in order to confirm, he called Ka'b bin Malik radiallahu an, and he asked him, did you give permission to your wife to spend this money? And, she, and he said yes. At that time, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he gave permission. So based on this, the Hanabila in the Malikiyah, they say that a woman is required to seek her husband's permission even, she spend, even before she spends her own money. The second opinion, which is the predominant opinion, which is the Shawafir and the, uh, the Ahnaf, is that a woman is not required to take permission from her husband based on what? They apply the Qiyas or the, the logical reasoning based on the Mahar. Just like a Mahar, the Mahar amount. Whenever the husband gives the mahar to his wife, the, it belongs to the wife, she can spend it at her discretion, she can spend it as she, wish, as she wishes, and she does not require the husband's permission in that situation. Likewise, when it comes to her money, just like a mahar is her money, her money, if she goes to work and so forth, and she wants to spend that money based on her discretion, then she can, inshallah. And that is why we see in many families, what's been happening is that sometimes the woman, she's working, she wants to help out her parents. And she does help out her parents. But at the same time, once again, there are cases where the family is suffering. Her own husband, her own children are suffering. They don't have enough money to take care of their own basic needs. In that case, she should first spend on her family. If she's willing to give out, she should first spend on her family. And at the same time, if she can give some to her parents or spend as she wishes, that is absolutely uh, up to her. Now, the next thing is this. What happens in a situation when the husband becomes extremely stingy? And let me say this, I've been part of divorces because I do, you know, besides, um, besides my primary responsibility here, I do also uh, engage in divorce mediation and arbitration. I have a license of arbitration here in the state of Texas. So what happens is that I've come across many cases where, one of the, as I said earlier, one of the key reasons of divorces in America is finances. And when you talk to a woman, a lot of times when they are seeking a divorce, when you ask them what has been the key reason, she, they say that he is very stingy. He does not spend on the family. And this is where the trust is lost within a family. You know, when there, you know, we've always talked about this when it comes to marriage, that if, a, if there is infidelity in a marriage, if there is cheating in a family, then the trust is lost. And then that is why there's a lot of divorces. But also when it comes to a financial perspective, there's this, you know, this is a reason why trust is lost within a family that, a lot, that there are cases where the husband says, I'm not going to spend on my family at all. He does not even spend for the basic things that they need, the children need. But on the other hand, he will spend thousands of dollars to send overseas to his family. So he's neglecting his family here while sending so much money overseas. Or that he has so many assets, he has the money, he has the money. But he's not willing to spend on his family and he just keeps on investing, investing, investing. Or number three is he keeps on buying things for himself and he just buys and buys, but he will never spend on his family. That is where that trust is lost. And by the way, this is where a lot of times women will come with this idea, although it is a flawed idea. It is a flawed concept. And I'm sure you've heard this where many women, they have said, you know, my money is my money and his money is my money. You've heard this before. My money is my money and his money is my money. That's wrong also. But the question is that where did this concept come from, right? Where did this concept perhaps come from? So first of all is that a husband is required to spend on his family. He should not be stingy. As I said earlier, based on his, based on his financial status and based on what is the need, the order at that time, he should spend. But when he becomes stingy, 
Is the woman allowed to take from his money or not? This is where it becomes a contentious issue. And the, region, the reason why it is a contentious issue is because there is a hadith of Rasulullah wasallam. And once again, that the, the hadith is that, the, that Hind ibn uh, bint Utbah, the wife of Abu Sufyan, she came to Rasulullah wasallam and she said that my husband Abu Sufyan is, st- is a stingy man and who does not spend enough on me and the children except for what I take from his wealth without, without his knowledge. Meaning that at that time, she probably had a credit card of his basically, okay? So she had access to his money. She would go and spend his money. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what did he say in return? He said that take from his wealth on a reasonable basis, only what is sufficient for you and your family and for you and your children. This is what Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. Now, many times people think that, you know what? If this is what Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, that I can go and take as much as I want. Once again, what did Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say? In a case where the man has been declared stingy, he's not giving to the family, in that case, a woman is allowed to go and take what is sufficient, not extravagant, sufficient for her and her children. And this is something that where the issues begin to occur. So that is why for the husband, he needs to understand that I need to spend on my family. My family is a priority and he should never be stingy. Otherwise, that is where the issues do occur. And by the way, I'm not going to get into this right now, but there's a lot of discussion amongst the fuqaha about this hadith. About this hadith in what sense? That did this fatwa of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, was this in terms of sharia, that this is a legislative rule? Or is this in terms of the Prophet ﷺ being a qadi in that particular situation? Meaning that is this exclusive or is it inclusive? Is this very special or is it a general rule? Many of the fuqaha have gone into this hadith and they have made, there are a lot of discussions about this hadith you can find in the books of fiqh. Now the last thing is, which is a very important also topic, and that is that are women allowed to work? Strictly from a financial perspective, are women allowed to work? And there are a few things that we have to keep in mind. Number one is, I always say that these kind of things have to be discussed prior to marriage in, the, in this day and age. So if your children are getting married anytime soon, they should have this discussion. Prior to, prior to getting married, when this is discussed, if the, if the discussion is that the wife will not work and she will stay at home, then once the Aqdun Nikah has taken place, she should honor that. If the discussion and the agreement has been made that she will be allowed to work, then after Aqdun Nikah, she should be allowed to work. She should be allowed to work because once again, prior to the marriage, this was the agreement. Now, let's just say if this subject, this topic was not discussed at all, then you have to assess the situation. Then you have to analyze the, the, the circumstances. So first of all is that, and the ulama, they say that if the woman has no children, she is taking care of her domestic responsibilities, she's taking care of her husband's rights, and she's doing everything that she needs to do as a wife. And she wants to go out and work because she has not much to do at that time. Then in that particular situation, if, not, if none of her responsibilities and role is being violated, then at that time, if she wants to go out and work, she should be able to, she should be given permission to go out and work. Now, the other issue when it comes to work is, that where is she working? That has to also be observed. Is she working in an environment where there's always a lot of men and so forth, if there's a lot of interaction with the men and so forth, and are the, the rules or the boundaries of Sharia, are they being uh, compromised and so forth? Those things have to be observed. If there are also many cases where women, they've had children, the children are now grown up, they're teenagers. Some, have, some perhaps have got married and they have moved on. Now this woman, she has, she's taking care of her responsibilities. She's fulfilling her husband's rights and so forth. Now she wants to go out and perhaps pursue a, you know, a passion of hers. There are many women who go out and they study and they're teaching and they're doing some good. You know, in some way they're just, you know, they're fulfilling a passion of life of theirs. And it's within the, the boundaries of Sharia and so forth without compromising her role and her responsibilities at home. Then in that particular case, there should be no haraj if she does go out and work. However, the ulama have also stated, which is very important, that imagine if there was a situation where prior to the marriage, the agreement was that she will not work. But then she says that she does want to work. Okay, she does want to work. Now, in this situation, two things can happen. 
Why does she want to go to work? Either number one is the husband has become extremely stingy. He does not want to spend or also this happens. And this is why it's not okay in our deen. For the husband to keep on reminding his family how much I spent. I bought you this, I bought you this, I bought you this, I bought you this. We don't have to keep on reminding our families. This is why in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he talks about even sadaqah, when you give sadaqah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Mannan wala adha. You don't keep on injuring the person. You don't hurt the person by reminding them, I gave you a sadaqah and so forth. Likewise, when a man spends upon his family, this is also a sadaqah. It's a charity, uh, not that kind of charity, don't misunderstand. But the point is that this is a man spending upon his family. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will return it to him. But at the same time, you don't have to keep on reminding the family. A lot of times when you keep on reminding the family over and over again how much you spend, then the woman gets fed up. She says, I'd rather just go and make my own money. And also when the husband becomes stingy, they want to go and work. But in that particular situation, if she does want to go and work and so forth, the ulama have said that it is allowed for a man to say that initially the agreement was that we, you will not work. But if you're going to go and work, then on the condition that some of your money has to come and take care of the bills of the house. That is an agreement that can be taking place, that can take place between a husband and wife. And the ulama said that there is nothing wrong with that. So for example, if the husband says, okay, yes, you can go and work. But for example, if the house is not clean, which is your responsibility, the house is not clean, then in that case, if you do bring a maid to come and clean the house, it will come from your paycheck. You understand? And that's absolutely fine. Or let's just say that if it's your primary responsibility to let's say cook the food inside the, in, the, uh, in the family and you that day cannot cook and so forth, then if you, we have to order food, it will come from yours. Or um, you will give a portion of your paycheck to the house um, or it will take care of the household needs on a monthly basis. Whatever agreement, but the point is that the ulama, they say that a man is allowed to put and come to some certain agreements with his wife if the agreement was never there and to begin with and now he is offering a concession or he is offering or he's allowing his wife to go and work and so forth then these kind of stipulations could be put in place so today inshallah i'm just going to cover these next week inshallah there's some other questions related to finances and marriage inshallah we'll talk about them next week i ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring peace to our families may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep our families united and we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to put barakah in our finances i mean Rabbil Alameen wa jazakum Allah khair Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Inna al-muslimin wal muslimati wal mu'minin wal mu'minati wal qanitin wal qanitat wal sadiqin wal sadiqat wal sabirin wal sabirat wal khashi'in wal khashi'at والخاشعين والخاشعات والمتصدقين والمتصدقات والصائمين والصائمات والحافظين فروجهم والحافظات والذاكرين الله كثيرا والذاكرات أعد الله لهم مغفرة وأجرا عظيما